The Haunted House. This story has been spreading everywhere. Everyone has their own style to tell about the house. This would help people stay more alert when choosing a place to buy because you might be scammed to buy a haunted house. That was a medium house that was abandoned for years. There were rumors that people said the dead owners were still living there. After so many changes, the population had been growing. We were all facing difficult economic circumstances, and people needed accommodation. Still, no one would have a gut to come close to that house. They said that was the haunted house. The house was for sale for years, but no one in the neighborhood had asked about it. One day, a couple paid a visit. That was William's family. Mr. William just had a promotion and was William referred to another company's location. His family needed a house to settle down at the new site. The realtor was Oliver. If he could sell the house, he could make huge money. I think this house is really a good choice for your four members family. Oliver took them to pay a visit to the house and lavished in his compliment to the house. Mr. William looked around the house and turned to his wife Emily. This location is very convenient, honey. Once he gazed to the roof, Mr. William hesitated. This house looked damaged. There has been no one using the house in such a long time. So it had been degraded, but come to think of the position, it was very convenient for him to go to the office. It was also nearby the market and school. Everything was perfectly suitable to him looked at the rubble, he didn't want to buy it. Oliver was a professional realtor, it would be great if there is someone could buy that house, he made his move, Director William, no worries, if you decide to buy this house, we'll call the agency to repair this house real quick, we guarantee it will be like new when you move in, our company will cover your repairing fees, he promised. Then he continued to induce Mr. William, Director William, how you could find another house like this, spacious and great location with an excellent price. You don't have to make a decision right now, you could consider it. Since the realtor offered to repair the house, he didn't feel reluctant to make the decision. He turned to his wife, Emily. What do you think? It's your choice, honey. After finishing the paperwork, Oliver started repairing the housework as promised. He instantly found a crew to renovate it. He came by every day to check the progress. Hey, make it carefully. Director William is waiting to move in. One of the crew workers brought out some stuff and asked James. There was some old stuff in the storage. What could we do with them? Actually, that was not Oliver's job to follow the crew to renovate the house. Still, he wanted to be in charge of taking advantage of selling old furniture or in materials fees. The worker brought out the old stuff he had found from the storage. That was from the former owner, probably, there were some old furniture and the family's photo. Those weren't valuable, so Oliver just ignored them. If you like something, you could take it or else just toss them away. After a half month of renovation, the house had been improved vastly so that William's family could move in. The day his family came, people around had been both surprised, scared, and curious. They had discussed that, who dares to move in that house? Such a brave man? He is not afraid of death? William's family had to wait for days to be there, so they were so much excited. Looked at the new house, it was much better than his first seeing. Mr. William smiled happily and talked to his wife. James had a good work. The house looked spacious and beautiful, isn't it? Emily nodded her head and laid on his shoulder. As long as I could live with you and our children, I'm always happy. They were unable to imagine there was a threat that would come. It happened the first night they slept in their new home. It was midnight, they were tossing and turning. Honey, I feel cold? Do you feel so? Yeah, how cold. They felt cold and shivering, even they were covered with a blanket. It was in October, the weather must have been mild. That was a bit weird. Emily worried about their children. She got up, 
took her coat, and tended to come by to check them out. I need to check out our children if they're covering with a blanket, or else they could catch flu. Right after stepped into her children's room, she heard Emma's voice the youngest, she was talking to someone, you have been lived here before? As usual, their two kids must have been asleep but looked like they were too overexcited due to the move to sleep, she pushed the door. She saw her son Jack was sleeping while her daughter was sitting, facing the wall and talking to someone at the corner. There was no one there, she was unable to understand who was talking to her daughter, her kid continued. But this is our home, why I have to leave. Emily came closer and asked her daughter, Emma, who are you talking to honey? Emma pointed to the corner, mommy, that is Amelia. He said he wouldn't allow us to live here and would make us leave soon. Emily was unfathomable ultimately. She thought that must have been children's stuff. All right, honey, lay down and go to sleep. We're gonna play more tomorrow, okay? While Emily covered her daughter with a blanket, she suddenly heard a door sound like someone opened the door. She startled. That's Amelia, mommy, he just left. Emily was getting a bit worried and doubtful. She appeased her baby and left the room. She closed the door. Emily was a bit scared, the main door was opened as well. She had closed it already earlier, not her, not her husband, came outside. She looked out the yard, the storage door was also opening. Emily didn't want to bother her husband while he was sleeping, so she decided to come out to see what happened in the storage. Many things in the storage were clearly arranged. At her first look, that was just fine. She was relatively content for the realtor and the workers earlier. Emily stepped into the storage step by step and looked around carefully. She sensed someone was eyeing her every step. She didn't turn around yet. Once she decided to leave the storage since there was nothing wrong, a moving sound was at the top of the old cabinet nearby. She eyed up. There was a big box at the top that must have been a toolbox which was containing hammers and handsaws. It suddenly felt off to her head. Emily was unable to dodge it. The box felt of opening, everything in it flew out along as well, and the hammer felt straight to her head. Emily's head was hit by the hammer badly. It hurt her so badly, she fell to the ground after gave an exclamation. Her eyes catch in where the box felt out, up the top of the cabinet. She saw a boy, he was squatting in it. The boy smirked at her, and she lost her consciousness. On the other hand, Mr. William had waited for his wife to come back from their children's room for so long. He rushed out and heard some broken sounds in the storage. Seeing his wife felt, he hurried ran towards her, Emily, are you okay? Mr. William carried his wife and tended to bring her to the hospital. Blood was all over her face, which was so dangerous, but his wife kept talking something, ghost, ghost, painfully. After hospitalizing, after a few checks, luckily, she just got some slight shocks, there was nothing critical. Mr. William asked after what happened that night. Emily told him the whole thing. The reason why she came to the storage, then saw a baby at the top of the cabinet in there, and he pushed the toolbox out. That was Amelia, he has been live here before, their little girl spoke up. At first, Mr. William didn't believe those stuff but hearing his wife and daughter seriously, he started to doubt the house. He had been at the hospital with his wife for a while, then he came home alone, he found a ladder and climbed up to check the cabinet. At first glance, he found it surprised. It was full of dusty, and there were clearly some fingerprints and footprints there. Those prints looked new. That probably has been a ghost there, he tried to push the toolbox to his wife. He wondered. The more Mr. William thought, the more he got scared out. He could not let his family live there anymore. That was so dangerous, so he sent his kids to one of his co-workers, then he came to the police station. Mr. William had known the sheriff who had been living and working there for years, he came by to ask about the house. 
Once the sheriff heard he wandered about the place, he looked shocked and scared. Why you don't tell me you bought that house? Jesus, I just bought, no time to give you a call. The sheriff is Mr. Samuel, he very surprised since his friend bought that haunted house. There were two families used to live in that house and they had got dead people, you didn't know that. What? Two families? There were dead people? What happened? Sheriff Samuel told him about the old day. He had been assigned to two cases related to that house. The two instances had happened a very long time ago. Samuel thought there would be no one who could move into the house. The two cases were very impressive to him since they were all too cruel and heartbroken. The gap time between the first and the other case was a few years, but the details were very similar. The point was the husband had killed himself after killed his wife and child. The reason had been still opening. The crime scene was very drastic. The killer had used the knife to chop out the bodies to pieces. After investigation, at first, it was all pleased families. Still, after moving to that house, the husband's temper changed a lot, and in the end, he killed his wife and son and committed suicide. After then, even the reasons were all family conflicts, but the neighborhood had rumored that the house had been haunted, and unexpectedly, William had bought the house after years of empty. After hearing Oliver's whole thing, Mr. William got more panicked, but he was pleased that it was still soon when he could find this out. William, listen to me, you gotta move out right now. I'll help you to find another good house. Who knows what could happen next? The sheriff didn't directly lead him to the conclusion about the haunted house. Still, as a friend, he advised William to move out as quickly as possible or else he would regret it. Mr. William also panicked, then he obeyed his friend, he immediately found another house and moved. Staying in that house, I don't know what else happened. He was too negligent to not research carefully before buying that house. Luckily everything was discovered early, and his family was safe. As for the haunted house, you just leave it there without selling it. Later, a project was built, and Mr. William earned a large amount of money in compensation for site clearance. And William also heard that the area was not very peaceful. Unfortunate events. Hello, Auntie Emma. Who is this child? When I was eight years old, I had an unforgettable memory that I will tell you right now. During my summer vacation, my parent had sent me to my grandmother in my hometown for a few days. That's my grandson. His parents sent him here for his summer vacation. The woman who asked was my grandma's neighbor, probably. Oh. How great. The woman also seemed to be happy for my grandmother. Yes, she lived here alone. My parents or I did not come back to play with her for a while. This time I have a lot of summer vacation, so I will probably stay with her for quite a bit. After staying with her for a few days, there was a piece of the sad news that her grandmother's relative had passed away. That relative of hers did not live in the same village with her grandmother but rather far away. It took a few hours to get there by car. She could not feel secure and left me alone, so she took me with her. Oh my gosh, I am tired of driving, but I can't help but know what to do now. That day, since the traffic was running well, we just took two hours by bus. Our relative's family had treated all the visitors to a feast. Once we got there, I was pretty hungry, so my grandma brought me some food and asked me to stay put. Does everyone heard the news? I had eavesdropped on their conversation. It looked like that was an unexpected pass away. The family didn't prepare for it mentally. They were afraid they could have mistaken in announcing the bad news. Some of our relatives are going to come here later. Almost our relatives got the news by today already. 
I have asked some of our close relatives to help us out with the funeral. The day after, the family and some of their closest relatives went to a graveyard together. That was my first time seeing a burial, so I insisted my grandma bring me along. The graveyard was located in a foothill area, out of the village. I heard that each of the family in the town hosted their place in the cemetery for burying the dead bodies. I had followed my grandma to go there as well. They had stopped by at their spot. The workers unpacked their tool and started to dig in. I had stood there while I got boring. They were digging and digging, nothing else. Then I sneaked out and ran around. Why stopping? What happened? There must be a hard rock here, I think. I was running and curious, looking around some of the gravestones while listening to the crowd behind buzzed. So I thought that might have been something interesting. I headed back. I was such a little giddy and curious kid. Once I got there, they stopped talking and started to worry or confuse. Vaguely, I saw they just looked down to the hole they were digging. They had been stopped for a while and continued to dig out, dug a little more, around half meters, and found a large stone there that must have been at a tomb size. We can't keep digging anymore. Yeah, this stone is too big, filling this whole area. How could we dig more? The two guys who were digging looked at the men outside and talked aloud. There was indeed a huge stone, and they could not take it out or use dynamite to explore it. So, we gotta dig in another spot. There are still available spots. After discussion, they decided to move to another spot. They left the in-progressing hole containing the big stone aside. Two holes at a time. That will not be good luck. One of them worked as burial services for such a long time. He said that must have brought them bad luck if they dug two holes on the same day. All right, all right, but we need to bury in time. People were getting worried. At last, they discussed again and decided to dig another hole right next to the first one. They quickly dug another hole so that they could bury in the bury time. After the burial, the funeral would be started. Friends and relatives would come to share their condolences. As talked earlier, there was lots of food to make sure the visitors would have a bit to eat. Everyone in the family looked depressed and grieved for their mother's death. Everyone teared up. Even I was just a little kid. But I was unable to be in a good mood as well with that atmosphere. The death came to the family like an accident so they were swamped keeping everything in good shape at the burial. They were too busy to remember to fill the in-progressing hole up that contained the stone earlier. My grandma and I had stayed there for three days. After everything had been settled down, we headed back, I thought everything was over already, but a week later, our relative had come by and asked my grandma to come for another funeral. Our visitor was the eldest son in the family, that was my far cousin. I had seen him earlier at the funeral. Calm down. Drink this and slowly tell me what happened. My grandma welcomed him with a cup of warm water and comforted him, then asked him what happened. The eldest son drank the cup of water, then tried to clear his throat and told my grandma. He looked at my grandma with tearful eyes and choked with emotion. His brother, the second son in the family, was a construction engineer, but he had followed a crew to work as a blue-collar worker. He had to use the wheelbarrow to bring sand, bricks to the construction site. That day, he and his co-workers worked, as usual. There was a recently built wall there. He was walking with the wheelbarrow, without a sign, the wall suddenly felt flattened. The second son was unable to dodge, so he had been flattened by the falling bricked wall. Once his co-workers heard the sound and came there, he had been dead already, under the bricks. His lifeless body was covered with whole blood. The mother in the family just passed away a few days. The son as well, and the thing was about their village's tradition, within 100 days after burial, there must have been no other burial could be carried out. So temporarily, the dead body of the second son was unable to be buried in their burial land at the foothill, 
They didn't know what to do with their son's coffin. Are you crazy? Why bring the coffin inside the house? Finally, the big brother decided to bring the coffin to his house. His wife had scolded him for that, she thought that might get them lousy luck. We were unable to give him a proper funeral. You want me to let him outside, cold-bloodedly, don't you? The big brother was pissed off at his wife, so they started to argue loudly. He didn't like his wife's attitude since she didn't want him to bring the coffin inside while he could not let his dear brother's dead body outside. I don't agree to put the coffin in our yard. His wife claimed that it would be bad luck to have a coffin at their house. She insisted her husband let the coffin somewhere else. I told you, I'm unable to let his coffin at a random place out there, he was my brother, just like yours. Think of how he treated us when he was alive, why you're so tensed. He yelled at her, heartbrokenly. All right, all right, argument helps nothing, bring the coffin in, you're right, but let it in the backyard. Please don't put it in the front yard, okay? Finally, she was convinced by her husband. He was like her brother genuinely, she gave ways to her family's harmony. Even the husband didn't seem happy to put his brother's coffin in the backyard, but he had no other's choice. He understood his wife well enough and could imagine what would happen if they kept the argument, come hell or high water. There was a sty in the backyard as well, that was not a good idea to put the coffin near the dump, but the husband gave his wife a compromise. He mumbled and asked his brother for forgiveness. And so, the coffin had been put in his backyard, right next to the sty. He was unable to change with his uneasiness. The day after, as the other days, the wife came out for the morning pig feeding. She was so surprised from what she could see. All of the pigs had escaped the sty at the corner. What happened? What the hell happened? She wondered. The gate was locked carefully for sure. She had raised pigs for years. How come the pigs all escaped and were running around like that? She thought of how the pigs could escape. Then she had been settled down. She tried to bring them back to the sty. Gosh, what is this? But then she stepped out and took a look. She was not surprised anymore but was extremely frightened. She was unable to believe that was truthfully happening in front of her eyes. Those escaped pigs were likely to try to broke the coffin nearby. The coffin was opened, and the dead body of her brother-in-law had been felt out of the casket. She saw his body in the cold ground, covering with blood. Gosh, how could this happen? Oh my God, my brother, the wife had screamed out. The husband had heard her high-pitched voice and ran to the backyard, saw all of that. He stood there frozen. He screamed aloud as well then ran toward his brother's dead body in the cold ground. Oh my God, I'm sorry, brother, I'm so sorry. I was unable to bury you properly, my poor brother, I shouldn't let you hear. The big brother was holding his brother's dead smelly body and started sobbing. The wife was standing nearby, she was very regretful for that, but she was unspeakable at that moment. Honey, stop crying. Quick, quick, put his body back to the coffin. It's smelly and scares me out. The wife was unable to stand there anymore. She spoke up. You have no right to talk to me like that. This is all your fault. He turned to his wife and lashed out at her. What she said earlier got him angry. He claimed that was the wife's fault. If she allows him to put the coffin in the front yard, that will not happen at all. What? What wrong if I think about this family? I'm afraid of bad luck. Why you claim me like that? She got angry as well. She didn't think she was wrong. You don't think that was your fault? Seeing her insistency, the husband got angrier and angrier. All of a sudden, he stood up. He clapped his wife so badly. You're beating me? Our love is nothing. I want to divorce. The wife got exacerbated and wanted to divorce. After then, she prepared to leave the house. She packed her bag full of her clothes inside. She would like to get back to her parents' house. Isabella, you're looking so bad. 
What happened? Are you guys arguing? While heading out, her neighbor had stopped her and asked, he was a very close neighbor to her family. Yeah, we argued. She quickly replied then left hurriedly and angry. Hey, don't hurry. The neighbor tended to stop her, hey, there is a moving train. At that moment, the neighbor had seen a sign of the moving train. He yelled at her and tried to stop her, but it was too late, the train's whistle was louder and louder. The wife was in a hurry to leave. She stepped in the railways, and even the neighbor was screaming, she could not hear him out. She failed to see the coming train sign. Everything was too late. The train quickly had come by right when the wife put her foot in the railway. She was flattened under the train's wheels. The train left her flesh and blood there, that was so tragic. That was not the first time there was someone dead because of the carelessness at the railway. The neighbor was tormented by that accident by seeing the whole thing. He wished he could stop her earlier from stepping in the railway. After the big brother's wife had passed away, he came to see my grandma again to announce the sad news. Such a poor guy. He had been mourned for his mother, his brother's deaths, and then his wife had been flattened by the train after arguing with him and leaving. Those consequences made him look like a zombie at that time. He wanted to ask my grandma to come and help to set up his wife's funeral, which was so much for him, honestly. All right, you could get back to your home. I'll arrange to come there. Those unexpected events had happened to my relative's family that time had hit me lots. When I grow up, I have become a spiritual writer. I have studied a lot about psychics, and figured out the death of the second son was a result of the mistaken at the mother's burial. Regarding the end of the wife, that might be her fortune or the brother's revenge. Mysterious Urn Jars The story I am going to tell you is related to one of my sisters. In 2014, my sister married one of our countrymen. After the marriage, they moved to another place and applied to work in a factory. The factory had offered a dormitory for the workers. Still, they were just married, so they decided to rent a small house nearby. The house is a bit old and at a quiet location but pretty clean. I have been cleaning every day. The landlord said that he didn't live nearby. He had bought the house years ago, but it was not convenient for his work, so I lived at another place. The landlord had led the way for them to come to the house. It was tiny when looking from the yard outside, but there was a large front yard, they were thinking of vegetable growing and chicken feeding, that must have been great. The landlord took the young newlyweds went inside the house with a warm tone of voice. As he talked, the house was spotless. They just needed to rearrange and repaint the wall a bit, then bought some essential furniture. After negotiation, my sister and her husband rented that house at an excellent price. That house was pretty far from their workplace, but that was okay to them. They could save a little with that price. After then, the landlord promised them that he would clean the house one more time for them. He had collected some of his unused stuff and tossed it away. Everything just happened in a day before the young couple moved in. Then they painted the wall and bought their needed stuff. The night had come real quick. They prepared to cook, had dinner, chatted, then hit the sack that was not their property but that would be their very first home. They hugged each other, closed their eyes, and thought of the good things that might come tomorrow and passed out. But the reality was not like what they were dreaming. On the first night, while they were asleep, there were some weird sounds in the house, sounded like footsteps, those woke my brother-in-law up. Those footsteps consecutively echoed to his ears. My brother-in-law was unable to sleep, so he opened his eyes drowsily to see what happened. He saw lots of people walking in front of him, he panicked and got up straight and yelled at them, who are you? What are you here for? What happened? 
Why are you screaming in the middle of the night? Those mysterious people he had seen had been disappeared at that moment. His scream got my sister awakened. I saw lots of people walking there. Where the hell are they going? My brother-in-law told her what he had seen. What are you talking about? Who? I have locked the door very carefully. Who could enter? This must be strange to you to sleep. Might be that was just a dream, honey. There was nothing more proper than a dream to explain what my brother had seen earlier. He agreed so, he laid down and tried to sleep. Later then, that was my sister's turn, she heard some weird sounds and was unable to sleep. Honey, wake up. Quick. Around 2 a.m. when my brother-in-law was nearly falling asleep, my sister soothed him up. There must have been something wrong with her, she looked panicked. What happened? The sun is not come up yet. Why don't you let me sleep a little more? He was unable to sleep due to my sister's voices. He rubbed his eyes, straightened up, and asked my sister. Look at the wall. My sister was pointing out the wall, frighteningly. That was the wall they have painted earlier. The couple got out of the bed and came to the wall. There was a big crack in the wall that must have been new since before they went to bed. There was no crack, the wall was still standing. I think this is because of the old house, honey, just bad luck, no worries. My brother-in-law went to check out the wall, but he found nothing odd. He thought that must have been because that was an old house. There had been no one taken care of it or prepared for a long time. All right, I'll fix it tomorrow. Back to sleep now, honey. My brother-in-law kept his calm. He advised my sister not to worry, he was going to fix that. After that, they could have a good sleep. After all, the weird sounds didn't come to their ears anymore. In the morning, my brother-in-law had started fixing the wall. He bought some cement and lime to fill the crack in the wall and then repainted it perfectly. That night, the couple had headed late from work, then they had dinner. My sister came to check the wall. It had been filled and looked acceptable to her. The couple had stopped to worry and thought of good sleep as well. They went to bed, but that didn't just stop like that. At midnight, my sister had been awakened by the whisperings, not just one or two people there, that must be from lots of people. The voices were way too echoed to her ears, she had to open her eyes widely. Honey. Honey. Wake up. She soothed my brother's hand to wake him up. What wrong? Honey? There are lots of people chatting around us. She told her husband about the whisperings in the house. He turned around several times to check. There was no one there but them in the house. The whisperings got disappeared as well, there was just silence. I heard lots of voices, they're chatting, I'm not lying to you. My sister started to be panicked. She thought her husband would not believe what she was saying. I told you yesterday, someone was walking around, and you didn't believe me, honey. My sister was very scared out, so she asked him to check around with her. The couple left their bedroom worriedly and checked around. My sister held her husband's hand tightly and walked by him carefully. They had checked all around the house, but there was no one to be found, main door, windows had been all closed, there was no force open door sign. Probably, probably there was something, dirty, here? Honey, she asked him and wondered if there is, ghost in the house. If not, there would have no proper reason to explain what happened earlier. Don't be scared, I'm here. I'll contact the landlord to ask after this tomorrow. He tried to comfort his wife. They hold each other's hand tightly and back to the bedroom, right at the doorstep. My sister stared at the wall. The wall, the wall. Her face turned pale instantly. She pointed towards the wall and shivered. Turbulence came flooding to her husband when seeing her reaction. He looked toward the wall. Fright was visible on his face. The wall which had been repaired in the morning by his own hands had been broken again. The crack was even more severe than before. Could you come here to check it out, honey? 
My sister trembled and pushed her husband toward the wall. She followed his steps. There are voices from lots of people in there. Once they came close to the wall, he heard someone was buzzing inside. Looked like there were lots of people behind the wall. My sister heard that too. Even they didn't catch what they were talking about. Nor see what was since that was really dark inside. Those creepy voices were enough for them to jump out of their skin. They were unable to stay in the house anymore. They quickly packed up and left the house. They had come to a small hostel nearby to stay overnight and wanted to see the landlord by the following day to clear the scene. Is that true? The following day, the couple angrily came by the landlord's place since they thought they had been scammed. But the landlord was out of the blue and acted as if he didn't know about that. What? That is your house? And you're asking us? Are you kidding us? My brother-in-law was really pissed off at the landlord. The landlord explained he had bought the house from a single man, and he had stayed overnight there a few days already. Still, there had been nothing like they said. It looked like the owner didn't lie to them. He agreed to come by the house to check it out. Once they entered the entrance, the couple got a bit scared and went after the landlord. Gosh, why the wall looks like that? Once entering the bedroom, the landlord was shocked when seeing the wall. See, we don't lie, as you could see, that is 100% true. The crack looked very ugly, demonically. That is unbelievable, how could this happen? The landlord came close to the crack to see. Gosh, there is something inside likely. Yesterday, my sister and her husband saw nothing in the crack. The landlord had found something there. Once he touches the crack, he wanted to open it to see it clearly, what were the things behind it. He tried very hard to force open it. Dust was all over the place. Once the wall got a little more open, some rectangle-shaped objects had been falling out toward him unexpectedly. They looked like wooden jars. The landlord was unable to avoid all of them, so he got poorly hit. Those wooden jars keep falling out towards him, he had lost his balance. He fell to the ground, that was all of a sudden, it took my sister and her husband a long while to pull themselves together. Three of them looked at the wooden jars, which were messing up there, along with lots of dust and sand on the ground. Each of the jars got photos stuck at the top. Looking those photos and combined with what the couple had experienced, the three of them could guess what was it inside those jars, instantly. Dot the landlord was too terrified to keep standing, my sister and her husband had to hold him up. They all were very petrified. Then my brother-in-law was the first one who could calm down. He called the police to come and check those jars out. Indeed, those were all urns. No one could explain why it had been hidden inside the wall. The former landlord was nowhere to be found. The police's kept investigating and tracking the former landlord out. What had been done in the past? Followed by a ghost. In June, seven years ago, I had departed from my secondary school and had moved to high school in the middle of August. Since my high school was pretty far from my home, I had to stay at the dormitory, and that was the beginning of my unforgettable event. Luckily, I was an extrovert, so shortly, I had made new friends as well as used to the new environment. I got no uncomfortable when being far from home, and, another thing was my roommates were very friendly and helpful. Just nearly in a week, we were all close to each other like brothers. That high school was pretty new back then, it had been just finished one or two months earlier, there was a mountain, nearly West Mountain. The school was like in the middle of nowhere, there was just a few convenient stores and houses in the area, but there was a huge beautiful mountain nearby, we had been filled up by the fresh air peacefully, students like us had a chance to walk there at the weekend. On Saturday, students didn't have to go to classes in the afternoon. 
My roommates had asked me to come to West Mountain, their only Benjamin was unable to join us. That day was mild. We packed some snacks and some of our stuff and went to the mountain. The way to get there was beautiful as well. We trekked to the hill while we were watching the scenery around. Guys, come here. Once we were in the middle of the way up, I heard Jack's voice, one of my roommates, called us. Look, that way. He pointed out nearby and looked pretty surprised. I eyed out curiously and saw a tomb behind the ancient threes. That was what he called us for. Gosh, that was nothing, dude. At the foothill, I saw a cemetery. I had heard from teachers, and some of the seniors had told. There were some cemeteries up here. Since the mountain was a very huge place, people came to bury the deaths very often. No, not that. A tomb would not make me surprised. That tomb was weird. Look carefully, not like those from the foothill. I came up closer, and indeed, that tomb was likely to be an ancient one. I was unsure. That was what the Death's family had tried to build like that, or that tomb had been built there for a long time ago. My father was a fan of antiques so that ancient-like burial was very attractive to me. I stood in front of the tomb and stared at it for a long while. I felt very comfortable, weirdly, like I have been attracted by it. I stood there frozen and didn't hear any of my friends were calling. Hey, why are you looking at the tomb like that? I was unable to give my eye away from the tomb until Daniel soothed my shoulder lightly. I gradually got back my consciousness, but then I got a shiver down my spine. My back was sweaty. I got tired today. Could we make it later another day? Let's head back to the school. At first, we had planned to make it to the top of the mountain, but at that moment, Daniel told us he got exhausted and wanted to head back. Not only that, I also sensed Daniel and Jack were looking at me with their confused eyes. We headed back to the dorm, no one talked. After a few days, my room got some strange events. The first one was my sandals order. I got an obsessed compulsive disorder symptom. Every night, I had to reorganize my sandal to make sure everything was on its orders before bedtime. My roommates had tried to avoid messing my stuff at night. But on the morning after the particular day, we had trekked to the mountain. I saw my sandal lying disorganizedly, which was not expected. Hey, guys, did anyone borrow my sandal last night? My obsessive compulsive disorder drove me crazy every time there was someone touches my stuff, so I had empathized with this point to my friends lots of time prior, but everyone had shaken their head when I asked. That was very outrageous. A few days after, I had to head out early in the morning. Once I arrived at my room, I saw my roommates were all packing their packages. What the heck? Why are you all leaving? It's great here, isn't it? Or do you guys upset at me? If so, just tell me. My apologies, I didn't mean it. I was so surprised once I heard my three roommates would like to leave, I thought that might have misunderstood. No, we didn't leave because of you, that our family wants us to. Daniel told me, and the others also replied with the same reason. Then, they said goodbye to me and left hurriedly. We didn't even have time for a farewell party. I didn't believe in their reasons, but I didn't want to be mind-numbing, so there was me left as the only one in the room until the other ones would come. Regarding the strange events I have mentioned above, this is just a beginning. On another Saturday, after a few days, all my roommates had left. I got bored and went to the library to find some books. I borrowed a book and back to my room then laying in the bed until around 1 p.m. I tended to have a snap after one hour reading since I had to go to my aunt's place in the afternoon. Weirdly, I recalled that I had read just two pages. My aunt came to call me for dinner. I checked my watch, and it was 5 p.m. already. That was irrational. I believed I didn't oversleep. After deducing, nothing could explain how fast the time passed by. It might be I just overslept and didn't recognize. 
That night, after having dinner with my aunt, I headed back and wanted to hit the sack early. But I was tossing and turning around, so I turned the lamp on, took the book. While reading, suddenly I felt very sleepy, then I turned the lamp off, put the book back and fell asleep straight away. At 4 a.m., I jolt awake. I felt something extraordinary, so I looked down. I saw I was wearing a t-shirt as if I prepared to go out. The lamp was on, that was out of the ordinary. I had worn a shirt when I had gone to bed earlier. I felt a bit hot under my legs, so I opened the blanket and looked down at my legs. I was wearing my shoes. Another shock came to me. Look carefully, I saw my shoes had been covered with mud and dirt. Also, all my bedsheet was horrible to me. Did I just go out? It's four in the morning when the hell I go out, or I was sleepwalking. Those unexplainable questions popped out on my head, with mud in my shoes. I must have gone somewhere very far from my dorm, probably the mountain nearby. After a while, I believed I had been sleepwalking. I took off my shoes, then took a look at them. I wondered did I come to the mountain while sleepwalking. Come to think of it, I was a bit scared, I tried to recall, but my memories had stopped at the moment I turned the lamp off. Eventually, I thought of my three roommates. I realized that our room was not like before for days before the day they left. As what was happened, I thought they moved out really because of me. I could not understand what had happened. If I was sleepwalking, that would be pretty dangerous. I wanted to find an answer for all of those unusual events. So one day, I came after Daniel after classes to make it clear. I came after Daniel to the parking lot. I knew he always parked his bike at a particular spot. Once we got to the parking lot, there was no one around, since it was late than usual. Daniel still didn't know about my presence there. At that moment, I came close to him and pulled him to a small corner. Lucas, don't do this to me. Leave me alone. I don't know anything. Please let me go. Daniel looked frightened. He screams out loud and afraid of me. I was very shocked by his reaction, so I let go of him. Then Daniel stood back to keep his distance from me. You're scared me out. Don't come close to me. At that moment, Daniel was carefully watching me. His eyes were changed from frightening to scared. He gave a sigh of relief as if he just had a narrow escape. What? Are you scaring of me? Why are you looking at me like that? I was very shocked. Ghost, ghost. Daniel was shaking once he heard my question. He mumbled, but I could read the scene, and his words made me nervous. A clean hand wants no washing. What ghost? Did you see a ghost in our dorm room then left? You guys even didn't tell me about that? What a good friend. I got mad at him. I thought I didn't do anything wrong to be treated like that. Yes, it's right. There is a ghost in the room. It's haunting you. We were so afraid the bad things would come to us sooner or later, so we had moved out. Daniel got scared. He was shivering. He looked was recalling something. Then he started to whisper. Damn it. This is so excessive. Don't dare to think of leaving here until you tell me the whole things, hear me? I was very disappointed with my roommates. I treated them like my brothers, but they had turned away from me like that. I was furious, so I wrapped Daniel's collar. Let me told you. After the day, the day we had come to West Mountain and looked at the tomb, you were not acting as usual anymore. Daniel was started to tell me by his shivering voice. As Daniel told me, I stared at the tomb for a long while, then I started acting untypically. I had stared at the tomb with a glassy-eyed look. Even Daniel and Jack had called me a few times, but I had no reply. I had thought I just stood there for a few minutes. Not just that. Daniel said that after a while of immobility, I started to mumble something and acted very weird. My voice had been not mine. That was a very high-pitched voice. I tried to remember what happened that day, what in my head as I stood there for a while, but no memories of what Daniel told me. 
After then, I started sleepwalking and scared everyone out of the room. They used to see me jolt awake then walked in the circle next to my bed one time. They had called me for a while, they tried to stop me, but likely I was unable to hear them out. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Another day, I had mumbled something and hit my head on the wall. My face looked very scary. After a few days of seeing me consecutively like that, they all guessed that I have been followed by someone from another world from the tomb. The ghost followed me to the dorm eventually. They were all terrified and thought for their own safety, so they had chosen to leave quietly. They were so afraid of the ghost that might harm them if they alerted me. After hearing all of that, I could not hold my anger. I gave Daniel a punch on his face. I couldn't believe that my brothers would do that to me. After releasing my anger, I left. I knew what was happening already, so I wanted to end all of that unusual thing. Obviously, that was not the thing I was capable of, but my father could. He must have experienced lots of things and could give me a solution. I called him up and prepared for being showering by scold. Such stupid, no brain boys. Why did you stand in front of a tomb and talk junk? Why don't you tell me earlier? You must come home right after your roommates moved out, such an idiot. He toned down afterward. He would come to see me in the next two more days. He told me to stay calm, praying before going to bed. As promised, he came two days after, he brings a wooden box along. My father stood at the door and called me out, my stupid son, come out here. He told me to take him right to the tomb, then I led the way to West Mountain. Because I just came there once, I could not remember exactly where the tomb was. We had to look around for a while to get there. Once reaching the tomb, my father knelt down his one leg and opened his box, there was a copper pot inside. Then my father took the pot out, there were some pieces of joss paper as well underneath, he started to burn those pieces of joss paper. My dear old friend in the tomb, my son is just a visitor, he is just a child and didn't mean to harm you, if he did something he shouldn't, on behalf of him, today, allow me to send my apologies to you, and hope you could go easy on my little son from now on. My father looked at the burning joss paper and prayed earnestly. Right after my father finished, the copper pot got shaking loudly. The fire got burned out, turned red. Look like our friend, don't want to take our apologies today. My father looked at the pot and the fire. I was scared of I had to live with that friend my entire life. If you don't go easy on him, I'm afraid I had to ask my friends to come to help us out. He is a very talented shaman, please consider. My father looked a bit worried, but his voice was getting more severe and evident. Even I have friended with a shaman, but there are only my son and me here today, so please forgive what my stupid son had done. My father shook my shoulder and talked comfortingly. In the next three years, at this date and on holidays as well, my son would come here to burn your incense sticks and joss paper as his respect to you, I promise. Once my father finished, the sounds got smaller and smaller, the fire didn't flame intensely like before anymore. Then, my father burned the whole joss paper left. After all, he collected the dust into a bag and put back the copper pot to his wooden box. After the third, negotiation, my father didn't tell me anything else, he took me out of that place. He led the way, so I could not see his face, but I saw his sweaty back. Obviously, he just tried to be calm earlier even he got scared. I recalled what he had talked the second time at the tomb. That must have been a threat and verbally, he might not have any shamans as his friends. After that day, I could get back to my normal life. I have a big lesson learned. Whenever you see a tomb, don't ever dare to stare at it, bow your head or pray then leave. To avoid the one from another world might follow you home.
the red dress. In 2013, my girlfriend and I had experienced an unforgettable event. That year, we had saved enough money to move from our small old place to a better place, a rented apartment in West City. We found it luckily since the landlord had left us over all his furniture at an excellent price. Of course, we agreed to rent it right away. We didn't need to buy anything. We just needed to buy some of our personal stuff and made a new decoration for the apartment. What do you think, honey? It's spacious so much than the old one, isn't it? Once we saved enough money, we'll buy it. This is our home now. Finally, we could feel more comfortable with that convenient, quiet, and spacious apartment from a small room. Happiness was visible on my girlfriend's face. We had dreamt about the apartment for so long. Finally, our dream could come true. I was really on cloud nine. You made me the happiest woman in this world, honey. I'll try to make you happier. For our future. I love you. At that moment, we had a home, our warm and private place. We didn't have to wake up in such a tiny, noisy area every day like before. Honey, do we need to clean up again? Even the landlord had been cleaned up, but as I could see, it still needs to clean, or else I couldn't sleep well tonight with this mess. We gotta arrange our closet and cupboard. We laid down on the couch, trash talked, and discussed the future, then Emma asked us to go clean up the apartment. Then together, we had started to clean the apartment. After sweeping the floor, we packed our clothes out and hung them in the closet. While packing out, I heard my girlfriend exclaimed with joys, and I turned back to her. She was likely to find something very nice in the closet. Honey, look what I found. Is it nice on me? I saw she was holding a red dress in her hands. When did you buy it? I have never seen you wear that dress. The dress looked new, and I had not seen she had worn it before. I guessed she had just bought it. I just saw it while rearranging the closet. Might be the former owner had left it here. It looks new, like have never been worn before. Emma explained she didn't buy it. Okay. You could keep it. Wash it before give it a try. It looks really new. The former's owner might rarely wear it. What a waste if we toss it away. Seeing my girlfriend was fancy it. She kept it in her hands and looking at the dress. So I advised her to keep it. There would no one returns to ask for a dress. After finishing the whole thing, we had cooked and been having dinner together. Time flew by when we were having fun, bedtime came. In the middle of the night, I had a jolt awaken, straightened up, went to the bathroom. While wearing my flip-flop, I sense I have missed something, so I looked back to the bed. My girlfriend had been nowhere to be found. I thought she might be in the bathroom, but once I looked towards the bathroom, there was no one there. The bathroom door was opening, lights were all off. I came to the bathroom, pushed the door violently, and turned the light on, but still not able to see Emma. I was wondering where she could go in the middle of the night like that. After urinating, I came to the lavabo. I thought my girlfriend might be in the kitchen to find a bite to eat. She probably didn't want to wake me up, and I didn't notice. I incidentally looked into the mirror next to me. At that moment, I saw a woman in a red dress appear in the mirror, my heart wrenched and pounding. At first glance, I thought it was a ghost, but after taking a deep breath and looking carefully, I realized that Emma, my girlfriend, was wearing that red dress, such scared me to death. Damn it, you scared the hell out of me. What was that in the middle of the night? I gave a relief sign once I saw my girlfriend and told her with my uneasy voice. I didn't hear Emma reply to me. I looked at her carefully, she was eye-opening, dull. Are you okay? Emma. I sense something strange, so I called her several more times, but she wasn't replying to me, she stood there frozen in front of me. Emma, wake up. What wrong with you? Don't scare me out like this, I was a bit frightened when seeing my girlfriend like that. I came close to her, shook her arms badly, and called her aloud. 
After a few shooks, she finally responded. What happened? Why are you shooking me? She asked, looked surprised, and didn't know what had happened. Oops, why the hell am I wearing this dress? Emma looked at her red dress and asked as if she didn't wear it by herself. Didn't you wear it by yourself? What is this surprise? I thought she might so fancy the dress so that she had tried it on, but her reaction shown that there was something wrong. No, I didn't try it on. I remember I had slept like a baby. Why? She assured me that she didn't wear it by herself, so why she wore the dress in the middle of the night and got to the bathroom? She didn't remember, she looked like she didn't know what had happened to her. This is sleepwalked, definitely, don't mind it, let's head back to our bed, no worries. I don't have any ideas of what happened, why am I here? Even I sense it must have something unnormal here, but I didn't want my girlfriend to be troublesome. I comforted her then took her to the bed. She changed her dress and put the red dress on the dressing table next to the bed. Not long later, she fell asleep. I thought everything might over. I turned my back to her and also tried to sleep. While tired, I felt an unpleasant eye on me behind my back. That was like seeing through my body. I was unable to stand that vagueness, so I turned back to face it. Honey, what made you awake? Why don't you get to sleep? At that moment, my girlfriend drove me a bit frightened and scared off. Emma was eye-opening her lifeless eyes, stared at me horribly. God damn it! Why are you wearing that red dress? What happened? I was frightened. Wondering why Emma was wearing that dress again and staring at me with her lifeless eyes. Emma. Emma, I was worried sick and called my girlfriend multiple times. But she couldn't hear it. No responses, just staring at me frozen. That was vague. What happened to my girlfriend, I decided to clap her in the face. Ouch. Why do you clap me? Emma got back her consciousness, straightened up hold her cheek with, and glared at me. I want to ask you as well, why are you wearing that dress? You also stared at me, lifeless eyes, and immobilize, I have tried to call you multiple times, but there is no response, you scared me to death, you know. She was awakened but didn't know about the dress, she looked fuzzed. When the hell I wore this again? Take it off, there must be something with the dress. I sensed that the red dress was the root cause of the whole thing, I rushed her to take it off. I tended to trash it, but I was still uncomfortable when thinking of it in the trash bin in our living room, inside the apartment. So, I decided to come out, put it in the trash bin outside the apartment. I tossed that weird dress to the trash bin. I thought that would be over, I turned back my apartment, but I was wrong that was not entirely resolved. Honey, I'm scared. Emma was too scared to get back to sleep. I lighted a cigarette and tried to calm her down. Don't worries, just go to sleep. I'm here watching for you. I patted her head and told her I would stay up all night until she could sleep. Finally, she could felt like sleep. I have smoked for 20 minutes. I kept smoking a few more cigarettes, I thought of the red dress and got scared of it. I started to realize that the dress that had appeared in the closet wasn't typical. The more I think, the more it was uncomfortable. Once Emma had been asleep for a while, I got tired, so I tended to lay down and take a snap, but then Emma suddenly straightened up. Honey, what wrong? Why don't you sleep? I found her very confused and asked her. Why did you dare to throw my stuff away? What? What stuff? Her tone of voice had changed very strangely. I told her it was weird because that was likely to be another voice, not her. What wrong with your voice? Are you sick, honey? I asked Emma and a bit confused at that moment. Answer me. Why did you throw my stuff away? She growled, screamed at me, then she gave me an angry eye rolling. Where are you going in the middle of the night? Emma got up and wanted to go somewhere. Emma, wake up. Wake up. What happened to you? I have worried to after her then shook her from behind. 
Get off from me. I want to find my dress. She threw my hands. At that moment, I felt like she was as strong as a man. Her elbow had landed at my jaw. My tooth fell out. And I could feel the blood in my mouth. I had fallen backward. Stop there. It's dangerous outside in the middle of the night for you. At that moment, Emma had been at the doorstep. She opened the door and stepped out. I tried to forget about the pain in my mouth, stood up, and chased after her. Emma didn't even want to wear her shoes, she walked with her barefoot. Emma, wait for me. I ran after her with my barefoot and called her, but Emma didn't hear me, she continued to run out. After running a few meters, she acted weird. Her head was falling backward, her body nearly fell out. I stood frozen, unable to read the scene. Her body didn't fall entirely, it was like wiggling in the air. Emma, after a while of wiggling, her body fell to the ground. I worriedly yelled at her and ran towards her to check out. Emma, wake up, honey, wake up, don't scare me out. I grabbed her up and shook her body, I called her with my shivering voice. But she wasn't responding. I tried to pull myself together, headed back to the apartment, and called 115. Shortly, the ambulance came and took Emma to the hospital. I had to follow them as well. 3 AM Hospital of West City. After checking her condition, doctors announced that Emma had nothing serious. She had just passed out because of exhaustion. Thank God. Finally, my heart could turn back functioning as usual. Emma, you finally wake up. I was worried sick, you know. After a long while waiting near the sick bed, my girlfriend had been waking up. Why am I here? Ouch. My head. She looked shocked when waking up in the hospital. She was unable to recall what had happened. I waited a bit to make sure she was in good condition and then told her what happened earlier. How horrible. Why I'm unable to recall anything of that. She shook her head and said that she was unable to recall even a little. After chatting a while, I let her sleep. After then, I came to see the doctor again to ask about her condition. The doctor had assured Emma was in good health condition. After discussion, we both agreed that the apartment was not a good place to stay. What happened to them wasn't expected as us so we decided to meet the landlord to discuss. I had come to the meeting alone in time. I let Emma at the hospital take more rest. Once I met the landlord, I asked him straight away, have there been a woman in the red dress who had died in your apartment? I told him the apartment wasn't clean. What a trash talk. If you don't want to rent the apartment, tell me, I would give your money back. Don't talk crap. I used to live there for my own two years, a woman who? So I had a wrong guess. The landlord used to live there and assured me there had been no woman. I told him what happened the night before, the landlord was really surprised by that. After negotiation, we had moved out quickly. We had found another excellent place to settle. My girlfriend had got back to normal as well. I didn't believe that what happened was expected even moved to another place. Still, I usually spent my free time looking for an article about the death of the red-dressed woman in the apartment in the past. I kept in touch with the landlord to ask him if he had investigated, but he had no reply in return. Then I had found a photo of a red-dressed woman, but there was no news about her. Wealthy Dream Earlier, I lived in West Village. I heard this story through one of my close friends, and it keeps stuck in my head until now. I'm gonna tell you the story from 10 years ago now. Don't let it go. Kill it. One day, as usual, my friend was on his way home and saw two guys were chasing something. What are you guys doing? My friend curiously asked them. We found a fat weasel. They had found a weasel and wanted to kill it. My friend looked towards the weasel which was lying on the ground. There were countless wounds on its body, and it was bleeding. 
Let it go. It looks pitiful. My friend felt sorry for the weasel and asked them to let it go. Are you kidding us? We took lots of time to have it. How could we just let it go easily? But those two guys didn't want to go easy on the wounded weasel. They tried to kill it. If you want it, leave me 500, or else leave us alone. They had offered him a price for letting the weasel go. What does it sound? Do you want to save it? Even though my friend had enough money, but that was a high price, so he had a bit hesitant. Don't have money? So don't pretend to be a hypocrite here. Get lost. Seeing my friend's hesitation, one of them continued to use a stick to poke the weasel. The weasel scream aloud painfully. Its body was bleeding with lots of fresh blood. Stop it. Please don't hurt the weasel. I'll give you the money. My friend was unable to see those cruel actions. He gave them money. The two guys took the money, then left. Go, quick, or they gotta change their minds. My friend took out his handkerchief and tied the weasel down, then told it to leave. After a bandage, the weasel had left. My friend had given the two guys all of his salary that day, but he was delighted because he had done a good thing. Time flew by. After then, the weasel came to his house every day, unexpectedly. The weasel appeared to wander around his house. It didn't take his chicken or come close to him, just lurked around his house. My friend didn't chase it away, nor take it as a pet in his house, just let it lurking around day by day. In a blink of an eye, that was 20 years, the weasel had been wandering around his house for 20 years. My friend was becoming a middle-aged man, he was in his 40s, but he was still single. Probably, girls in the village had criticized him and didn't want to marry a poor man like him. One night, while he was asleep, he had heard a man's voice near his bed, but he was unable to open his eyes. Twenty years ago, you saved my life. I have completely recovered and wanted to give you a favor. I'll make you become a rich man. The man introduced he was the weasel saved by my friend and wanted to repay him, he would make my friend rich. After then, my friend jolt awake, but he found no one in his small house, he thought it must have been a dream. Due to his age, he could not make a living with his hoe, so he opened his business to prepare vinegar as his traditional recipe. He would bring vinegar to the big cities to sell it. He had surprised that his goods were able to be sold quickly, almost just in an offer to the customers in the street. Then his business had been grown bigger and bigger, he didn't have to go around to sell it. People would hear about his prestige and come by his place to buy. He made more and more money every day. Shortly, my friend had his payback, and he started to have interest. His business had been booming. After two years later, he had opened a few branches. All of his stores were working fine. He had become a big boss, and just been at home and collect the money. Not long later, he became made of money. He chose a great feng shui erected a giant mansion. After finishing the house, it looked like a small castle. My friend started to open his business to other fields, and surprisingly, everything was running so well, even he was good at the area or not. With his fortune, shortly, many people come to ask for matchmaking. Finally, he had chosen a pretty woman to marry. At that moment, my friend was in his forties, and his wife was just in her twenties. My friend was immensely enjoying his abundant life. Honey. Our dog got pregnant. I see. My friend had a dog. When my friend turned to be 43, the dog got pregnant. I think we also need a child. Indeed, honey. At that moment, he thought of a child. He needs a baby to take care of his business later on. My friend had thought of enjoying his wealth the rest of his life just like that. But one night, while he and his wife were asleep. Hey, buddy. He heard a familiar voice nearby. That was the voice he had been listened to years ago. I need to let you know this. The voice keeps echoing. Your dog would give birth to five small dogs. 
Among them, there will be one with a white birthmark on the chest that would be a good dog. But it will harm your family later, so you're better to toss it away right after it's born, remember that. Remember that. The man carefully told him, then his voice faded away. The following day, he woke up and told his wife the whole thing about the weasel and the man. What did the man told you? Seeing the sadness in my friend's face, his wife asked him. He told me that our dog is gonna gave birth to five puppies. One of them needs to be thrown away or killed. My friend told his wife he was an animal lover, so he was unable to do that. That was just a dream, honey, don't let it bother you. Seeing the husband staring and thinking, the wife soothed him. Master, mistress, while they had been chatting, one of their servants appeared at the door and called them aloud. Daisy gave birth. Daisy was his dog's name. Really? How many puppies she delivered? His dream last night made him a bit frightened. He asked the servant to clarify if the dream could come true. There are five puppies, mister. One of them has a heart-shaped birthmark on its chest, very lovely. The servant replied, is that a white birthmark? My friend was astounded when hearing that what he had heard in his dream indeed became true. Let's go to check out. After a few minutes to calm down, my friend took his wife followed his servant to Daisy's place. She is breastfeeding her children. Wow, this puppy is adorable, its birthmark is special. Once my friend came by, some of his servants were gathering around as well. They were all in love with the puppy with its white birthmark. Master, mistress, once my friend and his wife came, those servants gave them the way to see Daisy. Daisy had given birth to five pups as the anticipation in his dream. She was lying on the ground while its children were gathering around her, they looked pleased. My friend asked one of his servants to bring him the puppy with the white birthmark. Mister, look at this, it is adorable. The servant came and took the puppy up. He was cheerful and lavished compliments on the puppy. My friend has adored the pupil right at seeing the white heart shape in its chest. But come to think of it, that was exactly what the man had told him. So my friend tended to kill the puppy, but he was hesitant. The puppy was so lovely, he was unable to take its life away. Clean up a room, lock this puppy out and take care of it carefully, don't let it run around. After thoughtful thinking, my friend could not kill it. He thought as long as the puppy didn't run around, that would be fine. He sometimes came to the locked room to check out and play with the puppy, and gradually, he loved the puppy. It was a perfect dog and very lovely. Master, master. A few months later, nothing wrong happened, so my friend thought the dream was just a dream, or the puppy was not allowed to go outdoor, so that was fine. One day, out of the blue, a servant came to him, that must be something happening. What happened? What is this loud in the morning? Seeing the servant came to him, with his sweaty and frightened face, he asked what happened. Mister. The dog which had the birthmark came out in the morning, and it has killed an animal. What? That made my friend so confused, he sensed something unexpected would happen. Quick, take me there. My friend asked the servant to take him to that place, he started feeling unsecured. There was a crowd gathering around. He entered that place, his servants gave him the way in to see what happened, he was horrified from what he saw. Three small baby weasels were lying on the ground, they were all bit to die by his puppy. This is not good, he looked at those baby weasels and repeatedly mumbled. A few moments later, he decided to come to the house of worship. I didn't listen to your warns. This is all my fault. He knelt down and bowed his head in front of an altar. Please forgive us. That was the altar of the fairy weasel. Those dead weasels were his fellow. While bowing, he heard a broken sound. He looked towards the altar, it got broken into two pieces. 
He had understood that the fairy weasel got mad at him and would not bless his family anymore since then. Just in one night, his servants had seen lots of weasels running out of his mansion from nowhere. They had no idea when and where those weasels had come into the estate. There must have been hundreds of them, babies one, big one. They were all terrified, they didn't see any of those as usual. Don't, don't take it. After then, my friend's business had gone broke. Everything nearly happened just in a night. His stores had been closed, he had to borrow some loans, and his creditors had foreclosed his mansion. The wealthy had been like a dream to him. His wife also left him once he had been broken and backed to his wretched life. He had to sell the giant mansion. When telling me this story, he was just a blue-collar worker, made a living with his hoe. My girlfriend is a ghost. Living under the same roof with Jack, Henry had met lots of spiritual things and events, tons of weird people, all kind of demons, they were all scary and also mind-blowing. To him, Jack was always mysterious and interesting face, especially he was a very gifted shaman. That was a month ago, while Henry and Jack were chatting in the living room, there was a door sound. That must someone is looking for Jack, Henry first thought, and his thought was true. Henry came to get the door. There was a man at his ages, he looked shy, hello, is Mr. Jack home? The young man bore a dark, worried face, he got in trouble. Jack calmly invited the young man to have a sit, please come in and have a sit. Henry sat next to the young man, and comforted him, don't worry. Mr. Jack is a naturally gifted shaman, he definitely could help you out. The young man started to tell them, my girlfriend has disappeared, she was nowhere to be found, please help me. Are you kidding me, your girlfriend got disappeared, you should call the police, shouldn't you? Why are you here? Henry was unable to keep his temper, when the heck Jack opened a lost and found service? But to reply Henry, the young man kept his face down, he was likely to have a lot in his head, after a while, he continued, I'm talking about my girlfriend, but she is not a living human being. She is a ghost. Henry froze at that moment. The young man in front of his face looked healthy and normal. The surprise and confusion came flooding to Henry. But Jack still kept his calm very well. You got a gut, man. You knew she is a ghost and you still were with her? The young man got a bit embarrassed. He took a little silence and then started to tell them about his girlfriend, I know. You might not believe me. His name is Lucas, like other young people. Lucas got a white collar job in the city. He rented a 30 square meters apartment to live in. He had been a simple man. He lived by himself boringly and lonely a few years until he met his girlfriend. One day, Lucas stepped out as usual. But at his doorsteps, he saw a girl who was sitting in front of his door. That was a young girl. Looked like at his ages, she was sitting there alone, with no belongings. He had to hurry to his office, so Lucas nodded his head politely and left real quick. He didn't pay much attention to her. After work, Lucas backed home, and still saw the girl there. She even kept the same position as to where he saw in the morning. Seeing Lucas, she smiled at him shyly and without a word. Lucas opened his door, entered his apartment, even this was weird, but how he could ask the poor girl to leave. Then the night came, he prepared to go to bed, and the girl just came to his mind randomly, he curious was she still there in front of his doorstep? So he came out to give a check. Indeed, she was still sitting there, she probably was shaking because of the cold night. Lucas was unable to just stand there, cold-bloodedly. He invited the girl to come into his apartment, it must be cold out here, if you don't mind, come in, you can stay overnight in my living room. She stood up, 
gave him a graceful eye, and entered his apartment silently. That night, Lucas brought her a clean blanket and let her in the living room. The day after, Lucas woke up and prepared to leave for work. As usual, he saw the girl had prepared him a great breakfast at the table. That made him a bit both surprised and shied. After work in the evening, there was also a great hot meal on the table already. Lucas felt at home for the first time in his life, he knows that just was a stranger, but deep down, he wanted to have a girl like that, he would let the girl just like that, stay in his apartment forever if she didn't want to leave. Day after day, they two got along well with each other. The girl was doing the house chores, cooking while Lucas was going out for work then buying groceries and food. Lucas found that the girl was disabled, she was unable to speak, but that was not a big deal to him, they had managed to communicate by sign language. Their relationship had been developed profoundly, Lucas daily backed home after work and would tell her what he had experienced throughout his day, she loved to hear Lucas's stories, but she had never wanted to go out of the apartment. She knew what were Lucas's favorite dishes and often made him, she also kept his apartment to be always clean. One day, Lucas decided to confess how much he loves her, and the girl had accepted that cheerfully. He's so happy and his sweet life had been continuing until three days ago. His girlfriend disappeared without a message. Lucas tried to find her, but he didn't know how and where to find her. After finishing, tears were welling up in the young man's eyes. He and his girlfriend must have had a very deep bond. Jack asked Lucas, so when did you find out her true identity? Lucas quickly wiped his tears, choking with emotion, he replied, one night, I had been awakened since I sensed something were moving around me. Lucas had found out the girl next to him was floating in the air, her body was turning to be very cold as a corpse. After that night, Lucas tried to keep an eye on his girlfriend, he realized there were some unusual things about her, she had never gone out, she had always kept the blinds drawn to make sure there would be no sunlight could get in the apartment. The creepiest to Lucas was one time, he watched her when she was cleaning dishes, her legs had been disappeared, she was like floating in the air. At that moment, Henry was unable to stay calm. Why the heck did you still live with her after you find out the truth? Are you normal? Honestly, I was scared at first, but I really love her, you know, so I didn't think that could matter, Lucas gave us a slight smile hopelessly. Jack kept asking about the girl, your girlfriend is a ghost, so her disappearance is just sooner or later. You should prepare for this situation, you know. Lucas kept silent, looked face down, he didn't want to leave his girlfriend seemingly. Jack continued, do you know what is her name? She is Emma. Lucas could surely answer Jack since she used to write her name to him. Jack gave a slight smile and stood up straight swiftly. Let's go out to find your girlfriend, who knows how lucky we are. Jack asked about Lucas's apartment position, he found something on the map, then the three came to a hospital's memorial house nearby Lucas's place. The manager stopped them, what are you looking for? Someone or register to pay a visit, please give me the information here. Jack replied, we're looking for a girl, her name is Emma, is there anyone here named Emma? The manager looked at Jack, found that he was wearing some wear clothes, and his tone of voice was a bit impolite, there were dozens of Emma, could you give me more specific? Jack continued calmly, she was just arrived here, no family. The manager quickly replied, are you mentioning a poor mute girl? She had a car accident, we were unable to contact her family. Jack pointed to Lucas, this is her boyfriend, he just heard and rushed here. The manager took them in instantly. The three of them came to Emma's urn. Lucas saw her photo there, that was indeed his girlfriend who he was looking for. Jack shook Lucas's shoulder and comforted him, don't you want to see her? 
Ima help you to see her this one last time, she is dead. We were unable to bother her, so just one last time. Jack gave Lucas a sign to go to the opposite of the urn. Jack explained to us. Normally, he needed a psychic to translate but since Lucas had lived with her enough long so he could talk to her directly, Jack took two pieces of yellow talisman. He stuck them to Lucas's arms. Then Jack started to incarnate. A while after, white vaporous smoke appeared in front of Lucas, it was condensed and shaped into a human-like object, that was Emma. Right after seeing Emma, Lucas was shedding tears. He wanted to tell her so much but he was speechless at that moment. Finally, he took a deep sigh, and just simply said, Emma, I know we are unable to be together anymore, but when I was with you, that was my happiest time ever in my life, I hope you could rest in peace. I definitely will come to find you in the afterward, please wait for me. He promised. Emma's tears fell down, she looked at him and gave him a sweet smile, only Lucas could understand her at that moment. The smoke was fading out then disappeared in front of them. Henry got reddish eyes when seeing their love, which touched his heart. Jack came close to Lucas and tried to cheer him up, she is a good girl, but you know, human beings and ghosts are unable to live in the same world. I believe both of you could find your own happiness. Finally, this is a clear separation between life and death, you're walking in two different paths, you're better to give up, you're still young anyways, you gotta move on. The Bizarre Teddy Bear My name is Henry, I came from West Village, I have left my hometown to go to the city to make a living for years ago. I had met my wife here and we had a child already, I have bought a house and live with my family. My old parents still lived at West Village, so me and my wife had to get back to pay them a visit every year. One day, me and my wife both had a week off, so I drove my wife and my son back to our hometown. At that time, we had an unforgettable experience. We don't have to drive fast, honey. My son is Matthew. He was gonna turn 5 years old that year, he always got overexcited every time we headed to our hometown. How is it going, my buddy? We nearly see your grandpa and grandma, do you like it? I was driving and looking him through the mirror to tease him, he had been in his mom hands, looked so much excited. I'm so happy, dad. Look who is grinning. Our family was talking and laughing a lot together enjoyably along the way. My son was very adorable. Thanks to my wife and my son, I was still driving tirelessly even for hours. I have told my parent prior every time I backed hometown. This time as well, my parent always stood in the yard to welcome us. I saw them afar right at the gate of the house from my car's windows. They were so happy when we paid a visit to them, they love and always care for us. Every holiday, they called to check out if we could bring my son to see them. My parent-in-law had died young, so we always headed to my parents' place if there was a chance. There are not much holidays throughout the year, so we rarely gathered together. Every time we backed here, we always had a long chat with my parent. That night after finishing dinner, we had chat to them until midnight. I needed something to play with. Buy me a toy. Buy me one, please. At first, my son was well behaved. But at his bedtime, he cried and yelled at us badly to ask for something to play with, he got tons of them at home, in the city. My good boy, Matthew, let's go to bed, we'll buy you a toy tomorrow, you know. What time is it, all the stores have been closed already. My wife promised. I'll bring him to the market to buy something for him tomorrow. I told my wife after we soothed our little villain to go to bed and hope he would stay till. What the weird, why he insisted a toy in the middle of the night at his bedtime. Probably, because he was just a child and so erratic, we headed to our bed and went to sleep. 
Recently, there are lots of pickpockets in the market. You gotta be careful and look after your son. Our parent told us. Me and my wife have had a good sleep until the next day. In the morning, we took Matthew to the market to buy him something as he asked. No worries, we will be careful. I assured my parent, it was such a long time I haven't gone to a small local market. Last times, we have been around our parents' house for a couple days then left, I have even taken my work here. The local market was small but also busy, it was in the early morning but there were so many people, I carried my son in my back to make sure he was unable to get lost, and so that my son could see things around easily. There were so much things in the market, they were selling everything, food, clothes and groceries. Daddy. There is a toy booth over there. My son got excited with the toy booth, he got a very quick eye. I looked toward where my son pointed out, there was a man who was spreading a canvas in the ground, and putting full of toys on it. I took my son to the booth, dropped him down so that he could collect something nice to him, he looked around and unable to decide to buy which one. Hey boy, do you like this one, this one could talk. The owner of the toy booth introduced to my son about a teddy bear which was able to talk. Look carefully. Hello. I saw the owner said hello then pressed the button in the teddy bear's body. Hello. The teddy bear copied his word. It turned out to be a recorder with a teddy bear shape, I thought, in our city. Those stuff didn't popular, kids from the city was likely to into gamer. Daddy. I love this teddy bear, could I have it? He couldn't resist as he was just a 5 years old boy, that was so much attractive to him, he loved it at his first glance. My name is Matthew, what about you? He hold the teddy bear and talk to it all the way home, such an innocent boy. I'm Matthew, what about you? The teddy bear repeated what my son had told earlier, that was a weird sound, but I have ignored it. That teddy bear was not bad. My son was kinda easy to get bored, but this time was different. He had played with the teddy bear for two days in a row without complaints. Until he felt asleep, the teddy bear had been put next to him as well. Two days after, as the other day, my son put the teddy bear next to him to go to sleep. There was a trilling event happened. While I was sleeping, I have heard someone beginning to sob. Play. Play. Mommy. Mommy. The sound was louder and clearer. I found it started to be weird. I guessed the sound was from the teddy bear, that woke me up. At first, I think my son had been awakened and played with that teddy bear, but when I turned to see him, he was sleeping like a baby, there was just that teddy bear talk to itself. Some. Someone. I was a little startled but I thought the teddy bear might have a save function but the owner didn't realize. When my son was sleeping, he had touch its switch and the teddy bear played it aloud. It is too cold, too cold. I stared at the teddy bear a while, it was continuing to play its records with an interrupted weirdly voice. I picked the teddy bear up and found the switch then tried to press it. After then I have heard nothing, so I put it down and lay down. My name is Sophia. What is your name? Just a bit later, the teddy bear spoke up again. No one play with me. I'm alone here. I'm cold. I straightened up and cursed. The teddy continued to talk some weird things aloud. I miss my mom so much. Honey, what are you doing with that teddy bear at this late? The teddy bear voice might wake my wife up as well. I miss my mom so much. I'm cold and lonely. Play with me. This teddy bear keep talking aloud. I'm confusing what should I do with this. I have turned the switch off, but it doesn't work. I explained. I want to hear my mom singing. I miss my mom badly. Such a weird voice. It's more like from a baby girl. The teddy bear keep talking after all, that was creepy. That's creepy, could you take off the battery? We will toss it away tomorrow. After a few silent moments, my wife told me to take off the battery, so that the teddy bear could stop, 
We were a bit worrying. Fortunately, my son was still sleeping and didn't know about what happened. I took my wife's advice, took off the battery from the teddy bear, then put it down to the table and wait for a long while to make sure it worked. Then we got back to sleep. The next morning, my wife reminded to toss the teddy bear away secretly so that my son would not play with that weird teddy bear. After the night earlier, I felt that there was something wrong and mysterious with this teddy bear, so I brought it out to the dumpster. Why you toss the teddy bear away? You just bought it. Looks like my grandson was very into it. My mother asked. This teddy bear has been broken. Last night, it sounded weirdly. It called itself as Sophia. I don't want Matthew play with something like this. I have explained to my mom. What? Sophia? Are you sure? Once my mother heard Sophia, she looked surprisingly. She even asked me again to confirm. Yes, I'm pretty sure about that. What wrong? Mom, you look so serious. What a weird reaction. Why she was so surprised like that when she heard Sophia. Then, my mom told me, there was a baby girl, who was called as Sophia. She have recently passed away. I got a feeling in the back of my neck. What if that Sophia was inside the teddy bear? My mom was very superstitious. Even I got scared from what I have witnessed. But I was still unable to believe here a hundred percent. So I decided to bring the teddy bear to Sophia's home with my wife and my mother to clear the scene. What? What are you saying Auntie Emma? My little girl's soul had entered to this teddy bear. Could you make it clear? Once she heard what my mom said in a spiritual way, she was way too surprised. My son told me that the teddy bear introduced as Sophia and told she was missing her mom so bad last night. My mom told Sophia's mom what I have told her, I have heard their chat and thought that might true. So Sophia's soul is really in there? My little girl? Sophia's mom received the teddy bear and very confused when hearing this news. Sophia, is that you? Answer me honey, Sophia. I gave her the battery to put in, and turned the switch on, she was a bit arousal and repeated those questions multiple times. My girl, answer me, I miss you so much as well. After a while, the teddy bear didn't speak up, she started to panic. My girl, talk to me, I miss you badly. Sophia's mom kept repeating those words, but there was no reply. Why? Answer me. She started to get disappointed. My girl, I miss you badly. She turned down her voice and tear was all over her cheeks, as I could see, that was so heartbroken. My family was standing there while she was crying for her daughter. I felt a bit sorry for giving her some hopes then took it away. Sophia's mom had tried to talk to the teddy bear for a while, but she had disappointed. There was no replies from the teddy bear, it had been broken likely, but she still wanted to take the teddy bear away. After then, I haven't heard any news from her and the teddy bear. A few days after, our family had to head back to the city. I still had haunted by the teddy bear. I truthfully hoped it could talk again one day. Takalash. I'm Henry. I'm turning to 24 this year. I just finished my study at a university in a small city in the north. I was born and raised in a small town. My family had saved money for me to come all the way to the city to pursue my study. After my graduation, I found that there was no chance for me to find a promising job in the town. So I had to stay at the city to make a living. I had been unable to find any suitable job then, so I had to live by my parents' money. To save money, I was unable to find a proper room in the city center. Me and my close friend had decided to rent at the suburb, that was cheaper. After a few weeks then, we found a job. Our rented rooms were in a small house as well. There were three available rooms for rent, a living room, a kitchen and a mutual toilet. We were all boys so there was nothing uncomfortable, the good thing was the owner didn't live with us. 
There was another boy at our age at the house. His name is Jack. He always looked mysterious. We used to see him left the house very early in the morning and came home very late. We had no ideas what did he do for a living. Jack didn't look like an extrovert. Living under a roof for nearly a month, but we had barely talked. Why does he wear his sunglasses the whole day? What a weird. Let it go. It is not our business. You gotta be quick or else you're gonna be late at work. I was a bit curious about that guy. Oppositely, my friend didn't give a fuck. Time flied. A few weeks passed by. One day, my friend gave me a call. He would came home late, since he had to join a party with his co-workers, so I didn't have to wait for him for dinner. I finished my dinner then watched TV at the living room. While watching a movie, I heard an open door sound. I turned my head toward the door. I guessed that was my friend, since Jack hadn't left out his room yet that day. A few seconds later, I saw my friend. He closed the door and took his shoes off, his back on the wall. He didn't look well. What happened? Are you sick? Why are you being like that? I asked him since he had leaned back at the door for a while, and his face was so pale. I'm fine, buddy, just a bit discomfort. He spoke up after a long break. I have out drunk, I think, don't worries. He continued, his explanation made so much sense to me, that was normal. He had told me he came to a party earlier with his co-workers. I'm exhausted. Don't take your time anymore. I am going to hit the sack. He was disappearing while I was watching the rest of the movie. After then, I turned off the TV then rushed my teeth and went to bed. I had throw myself in my bed for a while then passed out. I got a very good sleep until midnight. There was something that gurgled and echoed around my ears. The burble of running water was unable to stop, and woke me up. I opened my eyes drowsily, the burble of running water was echoing to my ears again and again. So weird, why this sounds echo to my room today? A few moments later, I had fully awakened, I had straightened up, usually, someone took shower at night was normal here but there was no way anyone could make that loud. Boy showers very quickly, there was no one could take more than 10 minutes among us in that house, but the sound had been echoing more than 30 minutes straight and had no sign of stopping. I had been confused and very curious, so I took my flip-flop on and went out, straight toward the bathroom. Once I reached the bathroom, I was surprised and got a bit scared of what I had faced. The windows of the bathroom had a little opened, through the gap, I only saw the darkness, there was no light on, but the sounds was echoing louder and nearer, there was no way I could mishear it, I wondered who could take shower that long without light on. I put myself together, then came up closer to the windows' gap and looked inside, that made me frightened. Inside the bathroom, my friend was bathing in the bath, his head was floating on the water. He was lying on one side of the bath and his face headed to the windows. He didn't take off his clothes, weirdly, his face looked horrible, his eyes was glaring, he was giving a half smile, looked creepy and scary. Ryan, Ryan, wake up, I got scared out at that moment, but that was my friend, I gotta do something, I was unable to leave him like that, he was likely to be in danger so I had stepped in the bathroom instantly and wake up my friend. I was unable to wake him up, on top of that, I saw there was something in his arms some weird black traces and his muscles were tensing up as well. That turned to be a bad situation, I thought. Those black traces looked like some evil marks as I had been seen from horror movies. I was confused about should I call the police, they would be a big help, but I just remembered, there was Jack as well, I just realized the way he dressed, it looked like a shaman. Jack, are you there? Come and help me out. That was in the middle of the night, I didn't want to bother that guy, but that was really an emergency. Just a minute, stop knocking please, coming. I had knocked his door for a while before he replied, finally, I heard a flip-flop sound, and he opened his door. What happened? 
It was the middle of the night? Might I help you? Behind the door, Jack exposed his half discomfort face. I probably woke him up in the middle of a beautiful dream. Ryan, my friend, he was in the bathroom. When facing that guy, I had sputtered. I pointed to the bathroom and hoped Jack could understand me. He was very stern looking when seeing me like that. He stared at the bathroom's direction. He changed his countenance instantly. There was something serious obviously. Jack backed to his room a few seconds and took a canvas bag. He rushed toward the bathroom. I had a bad feeling about that and ran after him. Jack put his bag in the ground, then squatted to check out my friend in the bathroom. He gave a light sign, my friend was not in danger anymore. I guess, there was probably still a way to save his life. Jack looked so used to this kind of stuff. He gave an observe to my friend a few seconds more, then carefully lifted up my friend's hand. It was too scary to me at that moment. Those black traces which I had seen earlier, were being all over his hands, looked like branches, they all were running to Ryan's heart. Fortunately, you found him at a very right time, he would lose his life if it was a bit late, he is such a lucky boy. Jack was a bit relaxed than earlier, my heart got back to its normal race as well, my friend was not in danger anymore, such a relief. After comforting me, Jack took a yellow rope from his canvas bag, then he tied it around my friend's arms. His movement was like a doctor in the hospital who had tightened my arm to find my vein for a blood examination, he was a real professional. After finishing the tie, Jack continued to take out a small jar from his bag. There was a red liquid inside, it looked like blood but a bit fresher. Jack dipped one of his finger inside the red liquid. Then he draw something in my friend's hand. Probably a talisman as what I had seen in the movies. He took a small stick from the bag out as well. Then he applied a little of that red liquid to the stick. After all, he used the stick to hit my friend's arms multiple times. Demon, please go away. Jack was hitting while yelling those words. He kept hitting and hitting in more than a half of hour. Finally, the magic did happen. Those evil marks got faded out from my friend's arm, then disappeared without a trace. Finally, the yellow rope and the red's talisman got disappeared gradually as well. A black smoke flied out from under my friend's arms. Open those windows, now. Jack turned to me and asked to open the windows near the exist. I quickly followed his lead. Right after I opened the door, the black smoke flied out and got fade into the night. Ryan looked better then, he didn't bear an evil face as earlier, he blinked his eyes a few times and was able to open his eyes. What happened? Why did you guys hear at this late? Ryan was surprised when he fully awakened, he still couldn't feel the cold of the water around him. At first he asked why did the two of us was there at that late. Let's get out of the bathroom first. If you keep your body in the water like that, you gotta get sick sooner or later, then ask later. I tended to answer but Jack already spoke up. Answer me. Where did you go and what did you do today? Have you seen something at the river or lake or something like that? You just have been followed by a takalash. After Ryan dried his body out, Jack seriously asked him. What are you talking about? Takalosh? That might be from a load of money in the afternoon. Ryan deduced then murmured something in panic. What money? Let make it clear. I have expelled it from you. But if we don't find the root cause, it might come after you again. In the afternoon, I passed by a lake nearby my office. I saw a load of money from afar. Ryan told us the whole thing. Once he saw a load of money, he came up close to pick up. But it turned out just a load of Joss paper, so he put it down and came to the company's party. I thought that was simply someone wanted to gave me a franc with those Joss paper. After the party, I felt not good at all, so I had hit the sack, 
But a while after, I felt very hot so I took a shower to cool down my body. But, what was happening inside the bathroom, Ryan didn't have a glue. Alright. Just back to your room and take a good rest, tomorrow we will come to check out the lake. Jack arranged, for sure I didn't have to come with them to the lake the day after. The day after, Ryan and Jack came to the lake. Jack brought along a yellow piece of paper, there was some red weird letters in there, that was probably a talisman. My friend told me that Jack had burned the talisman. Takalash. My friend didn't tend to harm you. Please go easy on him and don't ever hurt anyone again, or else you're gonna be punished. He pinned the talisman between his two fingers then lifted it up and murmured somethings. Jack tossed the piece of yellow paper to the water, he had repeated that action six times. Suddenly, there was a black shadow appeared under the water, looked like human but he didn't come out of the water. Those pieces of yellow paper burned to dust, the black shadow also faded out under the lake. That's enough. We gotta go before the Tikalosh change its mind. Jack asked Ryan to leave that place quickly. My friend ran after Jack, they hurriedly left the lake. 1. After then, my friend avoided to stop nearby any of lakes, rivers or even streams as much as possible, that was haunted him badly. After that event, we got closer to Jack, he turned out to be a very interested guy, and very open-minded. The mysteries about Jack's job and his status was still a blank for us. We could realize somehow but we knew that we shouldn't ask too much. A late regret. Here you are. Please come back another time. In a small riverside village, there was William's family, they had opened a small booth to sell tangerines, their tangerines were always very fresh and sweet. What do you want for lunch, honey? I'll go buy some good food for you and our son. Even they were not making much money, but they had their consent, they were very hard working to make a living, the husband really loved his family. William. I have bought some pig's head meat, come to my place and have some fun with me. But, they had an issue which was not big as well as not small, the husband was a alcoholic. I gotta go to Lou's place, you buy some thing to you and our son. William had barely rejected any invitations to have a drink, even he had been in the middle of his work, and being with this family. He told his wife he had to go for a moment, but he only came home after he had been out drunk, that was making his wife very displeased. Why you back home? Why you don't sleep over there? At dusk, the closing time, William got back to their booth and totally munted, his wife was very pissed off at him. All right, all right, don't get mad at me, I'll not be like this next time. Every time the wife yelled at him, he just smiled and promised he would never do that again, the wife had been like punching to a cotton ball. You just promise, from time to time, you don't wanna quit that bad habits, do you? She got used to those promises, she kept muttering during cleaning the booth, Mr. William just kept smiling. The wife kept her anger until the late night, even when they had been laying down in their bed already. Keep drinking. Those alcohols will kill you sooner or later. She sounded like a broken record every time he wasted, but the husband didn't take those words, he just knocked his head, gave a smile then forgot everything in the next morning. Ima hit the sack now, I don't want to talk anymore. You gotta take our son to school on time in the morning, tomorrow. It was all like water off a duck's back, so the wife gave up on him. To be honest, the wife was really a kick-ass wife, she could handle everything at the tangerines booth day to day. The husband duties were only taking his son to school. Sometimes, he helped in delivery if there were any orders. Long time no see, buddy. The day after, once the husband backed after taking his son to school as usual, he tended to head back home then went to the booth to help his wife. 
he saw an old friend of him who had been moved to another place, came to his house. To him, he obviously set up a table so that they could have some drinks together. How are your business lately? That was his childhood friend who he hadn't kept in touch for a very long time. We're fine, enough to put food to the table. The two friends had chatted heaven and earth, time flies when they were having fun. The two friends kept drinking, one drink and another drink until they got out drunk. The sunset had come already, it was at 6 p.m., and that was bad. William got to pick up his son, but he was so into the alcohol and forgot his son. Here my family are. Sunset had passed by, the wife and his son came home, her face looked pretty angry. William. All you know is just drink and drink, you forgot to pick up our son. Your son had to wait alone for more than two hours, you know? She was really pissed off, she didn't think about saving his face in front of his friend, frankly, at that time, William's behaviors was outrageous. Hmm. Hello there, I gotta go now, you guys seem have family stuff to talk. The husband's friend got embarrassed and wanted to leave. I just didn't notice what time was it. What make you so angry? As the other's time earlier, William kept his smiling face and talked to his wife. But this time was really so much to the wife, she walked by him and came to the table. The wife angrily tossed and smashed all of stuff in the table to the ground. The broken sounds made him a little sober. After release her anger by smashing stuff, the wife went to their bedroom lied her face down and started to cry. William saw that all, he felt a bit guilty, he told himself to try to alcohol withdraw later, we sell watermelon today as well, come have a look. We assure they are all fresh and sweet. After that day, William determined to withdraw alcohol and helped his wife at the booth. Thanks to his changed attitude, they got back to their normal relationship, they gave love to each other as before. William had withdrawn alcohol for a couple of months. Then he had received a call to come to a high school reunion meeting. Such a long time, we rarely had a chance to talk like this guys, today not leaving until we drunk. In that reunion meeting, almost the members were men, so eventually they had to have a drink together. William, what is it? How come you didn't drink? Give your best. William didn't want to drink at first, but he couldn't reject his friend's offers. Just a cup. I'm withdrawing alcohol. He was unable to keep his cool, so he had his first drink after a few months of withdrawal. But how his friends let him drink just a cup, they were all heavy drinkers, one then another drink poured to his cup. After couples of cups, he turned to the heavy drinker as before, he had back to his old way. Such easy to get back to addiction, just a moment later, William got wasted. They kept drinking until midnight, William got home in dragging one feet, he felt a bit sorry for his wife, but who knows, he told himself again that was the last time he drunk. He came home with his smiling face as usual, and called his wife out to open the door. That night, the wife had no mood to get angry with him as usual. She looked at her husband with her cold-blooded eyes, that were a look of disappointment. After they laid down in the bed, the wife turned her back to him and started to cry. William heard her crying and wanted to comfort her, but the alcohol got him sleep like a hare shortly. The next day, William had a lie-in until the sun came up too high, he got a headache and achy. He looked at the clock, it was 9 a.m. and his wife wasn't home. William thought his wife might go to the booth already. Once he got out of the bed, his phone rang, he picked up the phone and heard a bad news. William took of his shoes hurriedly and ran his ass off to the hospital. The call was from the hospital nearby, the caller was a nurse or doctor who was working in there, they announced that his wife had an accident when delivering. Honey, you're gonna be fine. His heart likely missed a beat when hearing that, due to his deep slumber, 
His wife had asked the woman at the vegetable booth next to their tangerines booth then went to deliver and had an accident. Honey. Honey. I'm here. Once he entered the hospital, doctor brought him to see her dead body. He saw her in the deathbed silently in the cold morgue. Her body was covering by a white canvas. Honey, I'm wrong. Please wake up. Wake up. Honey. He hoped that was not his wife, but that was his wife, blood was all over her body. Honey. Wake up. Open your eyes. At that moment, it was late for William to have a regret. His wife got a serious accident, doctor had given up. He grabbed his wife's body and cried his eyes out. But there was nothing he could take back, he was unable to take the fact, his wife had been left him forever. His wife's death made his world all collapsed, he didn't want to live anymore, he continued to drink and drink day by day. William found that he was unable to take a good care of his son, so he sent his son to his parent at his hometown and made friend with alcohol. He was drinking while holding his wife's photo, at that moment, there was no way he could let his grieving for his wife go, he just drank and slept like a log the whole day, he hoped he could stop thinking about his wife. William took drink after drink, ironically, even how much he wasted, he still had sorry and grief for his wife, on top of that, his wife was unable to come back to him. Honey, I'm drunk today, please come back and yell at me, I'll listen to you, I want to hear your voice. I'll take your words. Honey. He picked up his wife's photo one again and started to talk rubbish. Honey, get back to me and smash those cups, so that I'm unable to drink anymore. Suddenly, the cup next to William had been moved. The cup had been lifted up, unnaturally, that made William a bit sober. The cup looked like had been lifted by an invisible, then felt down and broken loudly. That was as same as the last time, when his wife smashed it up. While William was confusing, he had a hunch that there was someone standing behind his back. He turned back his head and saw his wife there. Honey. Honey. He got another confused and called aloud to make sure that was his wife. His cheeks were covering by tears. Honey, is that you? You back to yell at me, don't you? Just yell at me, don't leave me alone. He saw the one in front of him was really his wife, he insisted her to stay. The wife gave him a disappointed look, just like the day before she had been in the accident. I missed you so much, honey, that was my fault the whole time, don't leave me alone. He was heartbroken when seeing his wife, he was clinging his wife and asked for her forgiveness. How come? I'm death already, I had disappointed from time to time. Look at you know, I always saw you like this. She sadly told him, I just drink so that you can come back, yell at me, and smash my cups. Honey, don't get mad, please. I'll fix it, I'll withdraw it. He knelt down to the ground, hold his wife and tried to explain tearfully. Stop crying, honey, that was not your fault, that was my fortune, nothing could be changed. Listen to me. You gotta take our son home tomorrow, and take a good care of him for me. So that I could rest in peace, promise me. She was unable to blame him at that moment. And you have to take a good care of yourself as well, don't drink ever again. After all, the wife really loved her husband. I knew, I'm a withdraw alcohol. Don't leave me, please, honey. William tried to beg his wife to stay with him. I'm unable to stay in this world anymore, honey. I gotta go. Take your promise, take a good care of our son and you. Even how bad he was crying, his good wife was unable to back to his side anymore as the old day. Honey. Why do you leave me? Honey. His wife had been faded away in the air, left William alone with his grief. The house was covering by darkness and silence then, William had passed out shortly. The next day morning, he got a heavy headache when he awoke. He vaguely recalled what had happened, he thought that was a dream, his wife had come back and told him to take a good care of his son and live a good life afterwards. 
William looked at the mess in the ground. There were broken cups. That was so real. He realized that was not a dream. Honey, rest in peace. I'll look after our son. Don't worry. William picked up his wife's photo and murmured tearfully. After then, William picked up his son. He had withdrawn alcohol successfully and worked hard to raise his child. His son was a very good child. Your mom is smiling happily in heaven, you know. He and his son got over together. To be honest, the wife in the heaven was still keeping an eye on them. She was smiling when she saw they were living an abundant life.